There is no definitive criteria to determine the success of an athlete's career. It's all subjective. But suppose I were to tell you about a soccer player whose accolades include setting historic milestones, resurrecting a dying league, and representing their country on the global stage. That sure does sound like a successful career, right? Then how come that's not good enough for Freddie Adu? Why do we perceive Adu as a failure who wasted his talent and cost himself the opportunity to be America's greatest soccer player ever? Well, sometimes the lens we're looking through can be a bit distorted. From the jump, Freddie Adu transcended how we view soccer in America. At 14 years old, before ever competing in a professional match, Adu was already dubbed as the next Pele. It's normal for reporters to place expectations on players, especially American media's obsession with crowning young athletes and predicting their futures. LeBron James was hyped to be the next Michael Jordan. Tiger Woods was the next Jack Nicklaus. Venus and Serena Williams were the next Martina Navratilova and Chris Evert. Except, Adu was one of one. There were no past American soccer stars he could strive to emulate. But it's a miracle that Adu even had the chance to be the country's next worldwide superstar. Originally from a small town in Ghana, Freddie immigrated to America at eight years old after his family won a green card lottery, despite having less than a 1% chance of succeeding. Freddie's legend grew from schooling kids on the playgrounds in his new hometown, Potomac, Maryland, to dominating top Italian clubs with the U.S. Olympic Developmental Program in an under-14 tournament. At 10 years old, Freddie had a magnificent performance earning MVP in the tourney and gained the interest of Inter Milan, one of the world's most storied sports franchises. While it may sound ludicrous that anyone would offer a child a six-figure contract, top European clubs routinely went after players in their preteens so they could oversee their development. The thing that was unheard of was a club of that stature making an offer to an American, a country known for having a weak worldwide reputation in the sport. While the 10-year-old could have been swimming in candy with that type of cash, Mama Adu wasn't ready to ship off her young boy. Plus, it wouldn't be the last time European clubs threw themselves at Freddy. At 14, Freddie shined on the international stage after putting on a sensational offensive performance in the 2003 FIFA Under-17 World Cup. He played so majestically that a Premier League club recruiting director compared his performance to watching art in motion. Freddie had the world at his feet as multiple top clubs in Major League Soccer fought to land his talent. MLS's deputy commissioner Ivan Gazidis believed America's programs could compete with Europe's, which were historically known for handling prospects as age, but Freddie's decision was ultimately complicated. Due to a rule by soccer's governing body FIFA, players under 18 were prevented from transferring to a European pro team. But even a 14-year-old knew FIFA wasn't the most law-abiding organization and rules could be bent. Freddie wanted a situation where he could focus on his development and get a chance to compete at a high level ASAP. With MLS, Freddie had the potential to start from day one and undoubtedly be the biggest star in the league. Under the condition that he could play close to home, Freddie made his decision to join MLS and was drafted number one overall by DC United in 2004. MLS won the Freddie Adu sweepstakes, but the truth is, they needed Freddie way more than he needed them. When Freddie entered the league in 2004, MLS was on the verge of collapsing and desperately needed star power to generate buzz. DC United didn't even originally own the first pick. The league forced Dallas, who owned the top pick, to do a deal with DC to secure the MLS's future cash cow. Freddie had the ideal mix of talent, charisma, and curiosity, making him the perfect player to capture the attention of Americans and make soccer matter on a new level. Through a relentless marketing campaign that had him starring in commercials alongside Pele, making appearances on MTV's TRL, and doing odd shit like popping up at Spike TV's second annual video game awards alongside Lil Jon, Freddie became an instant sensation. Before he even stepped on the field for his first match, Freddie had reached the mountaintop of fame and became a household name overnight. While MLS touted Freddie as their leading star, he found it difficult to balance the act of being a normal rookie within his own team. Although players and personnel made efforts to make Freddie feel welcomed, there was friction from the get-go and Freddie felt like he was being picked on. 
Freddy walked into a team full of veterans making considerably less than him and felt like he immediately had a target on his back. Not to mention, Freddy also didn't get any special attention from his head coach Peter Novak who wasn't afraid to go rough at Freddy during practice. To make things more confusing, the external messages that Freddy received versus what United preached were extremely conflicting. United management wanted Freddy to block out the outside noise and lock in on getting better to win the respect of his teammates. In the eyes of the MLS and his inner camp though, Freddy was a godsend to save the league. He had promotional obligations for the league off the field that weren't expected of other players even after having average performances. Freddy struggled to navigate through his varied priorities, but his utilization became issue number one. Adu preferred to play more in the center, but in an attempt to get Freddy more chances with his dangerous left foot, Novak switched to a formation pushing Freddy to the wing. The new positioning exposed Freddy's main weaknesses defensively. Before joining MLS, Freddy frequently played against competition less talented than him, allowing him to freely take on players, score goals, and worry less about defense. At the professional level, Freddy displayed a lack of effort in tracking back, and his teammates weren't thrilled with the idea of picking up his slack. Because of his unbalanced game, Freddy acted more as a spark off the bench. Despite rarely starting in his rookie season, the excitement for Freddy to succeed only continued to mount. Fans packed out stadiums in a way that MLS hadn't really experienced just to see Freddy in action. Then in his third match, a do delivered. In the 75th minute on the road against the Metro Stars, Freddy notched his first goal, becoming the youngest player to ever score in American professional soccer. It was a monumental moment for Freddy's career and a record that may never be broken, but the goal itself wasn't really that special. It was a nice setup and easy poke for Freddy right in front of the net, but with the country so starved for a soccer hero, the entire crowd erupted in celebration even though his team was on the road. That's just the type of energy Freddy brought on. He represented a beacon of hope for US soccer and looked to be heading in the right direction. I mean, he helped DC United win the MLS Cup in his inaugural season. Despite adding a trophy to his collection so early in his career, Freddie wasn't satisfied. At 14 years old, he already captured a title in his first season while being the highest paid player in the league and was a celebrity outside of the sport. What more could he want? Playing time, of course. Freddie continued to be annoyed with his minutes and felt like he could make a larger impact as a starter, even though his team just won the championship. In his second season, Freddie's frustration boiled over into the public when he sounded off to reporters about his limited minutes. Being on the field brought Freddie joy, but his performance started to drop. Criticism of his play heated up, and the pressure began to weigh on him more. Adu had a bounce back year in his third season where he finally earned that starting spot he desperately wanted. Freddie began improving. He showed maturation by making amends with his coach, and while he wasn't yet Pele, he was still at an age where he couldn't even legally buy cigarettes. While things looked great on the outside, it was a different story behind closed doors. Freddie remained upset about being played out of position, and as the pressure and expectations to perform at a high level started to grow heavier on his shoulders, the tension between his inner circle and DC United overflowed. Freddie wanted out. The thing is, there was a disconnect between Freddie's own expectations and the reality of where he was as a player. He desired to be in a system that allowed him to attack more, and United granted his wish when they traded him to Salt Lake in 2007. While Freddie had a fresh opportunity to prove he could still revitalize soccer in America, a month later, people were more captivated by an English footballer coming to MLS. With Salt Lake, Freddie walked into an organization that gladly treated him like a prized possession. He had the opportunity to play more freely on offense, but the team was dreadful, and with no one challenging him, Freddie's ego ballooned while his effort diminished. Freddie slipped further away from the expectations that were set for him, and reporters rushed to be the first to bury him as a failure. It perfectly represented the extremes of his career, at one point expected to be America's savior, only to be labeled as a failure within a few years. But despite Freddie developing an arrogant personality and underperforming, he still showed immense promise in international play. That summer, Freddie starred at the 2007 Under-20 World Cup and captured global attention once more, which led him to landing a deal with Portuguese powerhouse Benfica. 
It was a dream for Freddie to play for a top European club, but his journey abroad ended in a disastrous nightmare. Over the next decade, Freddie found himself playing for a dozen different teams in various leagues across a multitude of countries. To be straight up, Freddie never really improved much. Experts thought he lacked tactical awareness, turned pro too early, and stopped gaining new skills by the age of 15. Criticizing Freddie for turning pro early was a harsh knock against him, especially when people championed him to do that exact thing. As he continued to stray away from the player he was expected to be, Americans were no longer interested in following his career. It was never really about Freddie. It was about Americans being able to puff out their chest and say the land of the home and the brave could kick any country's ass in soccer. Freddie was just another cautionary tale of the great American hype machine. The most frustrating thing about all of it is that Freddie could have been America's champion. He had all the potential in the world to elevate soccer in America to a brand new level. When he appeared alongside Pele in a commercial, Pele marveled at Freddie's abilities that reminded him of his own and compared his prodigious talent to Mozart. Pele also offered Freddie advice to enjoy the moment, but be careful as fame comes with mighty expectations. During his formative years in MLS, Freddie struggled with making the distinction between himself as a player and as a media sensation. He never had the proper time to focus on soccer because he constantly had to promote the league. Don't take it from me though, take it from Freddie, who sounded exhausted by all the things outside of soccer while speaking to journalist Grant Wall. It did get to a point though where I was like, damn, I, I, I wish I didn't have to do all this because every city we went to, I had to do a uh, conference call before. And then when I get there, you got to do meet and greets, you got to do this, got to do photo ops, you got to do this. It was just, ah, you know, <laughs> like, I just wish I didn't have to go through all of that all the time, you know, during my first couple of years. It wasn't just the fact that Freddie was overwhelmed by all the obligations, but he felt like his career could have been drastically different if he had more time to focus on the game. These were the important years that I, if I could have just, just focused more on just playing soccer, the trajectory of my career would probably be different. Honestly, it, it would have been much, much, much better for my career. No club in Europe would have made Freddie the face of an entire league, especially without first showing promise. Freddie was unfortunate enough to be the first young U.S. soccer prospect to go through this cycle. His shortcomings stand out so much because he was the first to reach such heights. Although MLS has drastically improved its developmental programs, even America's next brightest star, Christian Pulisic, was afforded the opportunity to hone his skills out of the media spotlight as a teenager in Germany with Borussia Dortmund. Think about this for a second. An entire professional sport league turned to a 14-year-old kid to be their knight in shining football boots. It's kind of gross. As a teenager, Freddie loved the attention because who wouldn't at that age? My palms were sweaty whenever my crush laughed at one of my corny ass jokes, so I know I would for sure act up if I was essentially treated as a sports god. When Freddie signed with Nike years ago, Nike chairman Phil Knight described Freddie as having the potential to accomplish more in his sport than Jordan, Tiger, and LeBron. The promise of a young genius is intoxicating, but not everyone pans out. On the field, Freddie never matched the accomplishments of the prodigies before him, but he did succeed in opening up soccer to an entirely new demographic in America. As a young black kid, Freddie had to navigate the stresses of playing in a predominantly white sport that tended to gatekeep players that resembled his skin color. Black children could look to Freddie and aspire to be soccer stars, just as they did to Tiger and the Williams sisters for their sports. As a whole, it's undeniable that Freddie made a sport that people rarely cared about relevant in America. Just look at those numbers. If you set aside all the hype and lofty expectations placed on a preteen, you're left with the story of an immigrant kid who helped change the trajectory of the sport in America and took care of his family financially. So I ask again, does that sound like a successful career to you? Because it sure does to me. Yo, thank you for watching this episode of Prism. If you enjoyed this episode, I think you'll love these other episodes in the series. Make sure to like and subscribe and keep on coming back every week as we'll drop new episodes of Prism. Peace out.